NASA says it's a comet, but Dr. Avi Loeb believes the object known as 3i Atlas may be something far more advanced and not natural. You've been hearing about 3i Atlas for months, but nobody's explaining what's actually happening right now. This interstellar visitor just went dark behind the sun during the most critical phase of its journey, and the sun chose that exact moment to unleash three of the biggest solar storms of this entire cycle, all aimed directly at it. When it emerges in November, we might be looking at something completely different than what went in. Understanding what's really going on behind the sun right now and why the next 72 hours could rewrite everything we know about interstellar objects, that's what you're about to discover. That is surprising in two ways. First, we should have expected thousands of smaller objects before we see this one, and it's only the third. Let me break it down. Right now, 135 million miles behind our sun, something extraordinary is unfolding. 3i Atlas is being hammered by solar explosions so powerful, they're delivering 33 billion watts of energy across its surface. That's roughly one third of every nuclear reactor in America firing at once, concentrated on a single cosmic traveler. But here's what makes this absolutely fascinating. The timing. October 21st marked superior conjunction, the moment when 3i Atlas positioned itself on the exact opposite side of the sun from Earth, making it completely invisible to every telescope on our planet. We went blind. And that's precisely when everything changed. Within 72 hours of losing visual contact, the sun erupted three times. Each blast was a billion-ton cloud of superheated plasma traveling at millions of miles per hour, and all three launched from sunspot groups that had rotated to the far side of the sun, directly facing the comet's trajectory. These weren't random solar bursts scattered across the sun's surface. They were concentrated eruptions from specific active regions that just happened to be pointing at the exact location where this mysterious interstellar object was hiding. The question that's keeping astronomers up at night? Is this timing pure coincidence or is something else going on? Now, you might be wondering, how can something 30 miles across at most trigger explosions on an object 865,000 miles in diameter? The answer isn't gravity. 3i Atlas is way too small for that. It's electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is 10 to the 36th power times stronger than gravity when measured at the particle level. The comet has a complex, dusty plasma cloud surrounding it that's electromagnetically active. As it moves through the inner solar system, where the electric field is normally stable, it creates what scientists call a short circuit in the sun's electromagnetic environment. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a perfectly balanced electrical system in your house, and suddenly someone plugs in a massive piece of equipment that draws power in a completely different way than anything else on the grid. The system has to adjust, and sometimes that adjustment causes surges or disruptions. That's essentially what's happening here, except instead of tripping a circuit breaker, the sun is launching billion-ton plasma clouds into space. The timing raises profound questions. Why is this specific object, with all its documented anomalies, passing through the point of maximum solar energy during the only window when we're completely blind? October 29th marks perihelion, the closest point to the sun in its trajectory, at just 49 million miles out. At this moment, 33 billion watts of solar radiation will bombard its surface. This is the most energetic moment of its million-year journey through interstellar space. And here's what makes this fascinating from a scientific standpoint. If any unusual physical process were to occur, whether massive ice sublimation, activation of complex chemical processes, or something more extraordinary, it would be exactly now when we cannot observe it. The coronagraph imagery from the GOES-19 satellite barely picked up 3i Atlas as a faint dot on the edge of the frame. Amateur astronomer Warchate Boonplod from Thailand first spotted it in the processed data, and subsequent analysis confirmed the object is still following its expected orbital trajectory. No sudden maneuvers, no unexplained accelerations. Just a comet doing comet things, even if it's the weirdest comet we've ever seen. But what's actually happening behind the sun right now is where things get really interesting. The coronagraph observations from multiple satellites have given us glimpses of 3i Atlas during this critical blackout period, and what we're seeing is both reassuring and puzzling. 
the object appears as an extremely faint point of light around magnitude 11 or 12, moving at its expected velocity of roughly 41 miles per second as it approaches perihelion. This confirms that gravitationally, everything is proceeding exactly as predicted. No course corrections, no unexplained trajectory changes. The orbital mechanics are textbook perfect. But here's where it gets fascinating. Those three massive solar storms that hit 3I Atlas didn't just disappear. When a coronal mass ejection slams into a comet, it can cause the tail to twist, break apart, or even completely disconnect from the nucleus. We've seen this happen with solar system comets before. Back in 2007, when a similar storm hit Comet Enki, its magnetic field collapsed and the entire tail was severed. Yet 3I Atlas? It appears to have survived the bombardment with minimal visible damage. The faint coma surrounding the nucleus is still intact in the coronagraph imagery, suggesting this interstellar visitor is tougher than expected. What's particularly intriguing is the anti-tail that astronomers detected back in October. The Keck Observatory in Hawaii confirmed something unusual, material being ejected toward the sun, not away from it. This isn't a perspective illusion. Real material was moving against solar radiation pressure, which suggests active internal processes, generating enough force to overcome the sun's push. Now, as 3I Atlas reaches perihelion behind the sun, that internal activity should be ramping up to maximum intensity. The question is, what will we see when it emerges? The sunspot groups responsible for those three massive eruptions are still active on the far side of the sun. They've been pumping out plasma and energy continuously, and as they rotate back toward Earth-facing positions in early November, they could be significantly larger and more powerful. Here's the connection that has scientists paying close attention. These sunspots became hyperactive precisely when 3I Atlas reached superior conjunction. The electromagnetic interaction between the comet's plasma environment and the sun's magnetic field may have triggered or amplified the eruptions. It's like the comet's presence short-circuited a specific region of the sun's corona, causing it to release stored magnetic energy in rapid succession. And there's another layer to this story. The timing of perihelion, October 29th, coincides with what astronomers call the Oberth effect window. This is the most energy-efficient point in any orbit to perform a maneuver. If you wanted to change course with minimum fuel expenditure, you'd do it at perihelion, when orbital velocity is at maximum. Any applied force gets amplified by the existing speed. This is why every interplanetary spacecraft times its engine burns for perihelion passages. Now 3I Atlas isn't a spacecraft, but if any natural process were to alter its trajectory, massive asymmetric outgassing, for example, this would be the moment when even small forces could produce measurable orbital changes. The International Asteroid Warning Network activation makes more sense in this context. IAWN doesn't typically monitor objects that can't impact Earth, but 3I Atlas represents an unknown. If it were to fragment during perihelion, releasing multiple smaller objects on slightly different trajectories, some of those fragments could potentially end up on paths that bring them closer to Earth than the main body. It's not about the current trajectory. It's about what might happen if the object doesn't survive perihelion intact. What we do know from the limited coronagraph data is that 3I Atlas is still there, still moving, still intact, as of the most recent observations. Its apparent magnitude hasn't changed dramatically, suggesting no major outburst or fragmentation event has occurred yet. But yet is the key word. Perihelion is the moment of maximum stress. The 33 billion watts of solar radiation hitting the surface will heat the nucleus to temperatures that could trigger rapid sublimation of volatile materials buried beneath the surface. If there are pockets of highly volatile compounds, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide ice, trapped under a protective crust, the heat could cause them to explosively vent, potentially breaking the object apart. The European Space Agency's JUICE probe is positioned on the far side of the Sun, perfectly placed to observe 3I Atlas immediately after perihelion. While it's using its backup antenna, meaning data will arrive slowly, it will capture the first post-perihelion images. These observations will reveal whether the comet survived intact, whether it brightened significantly, and whether its coma and tail structure changed. 
If the solar bombardment triggered major activity, JUICE will see it first. Meanwhile, ground-based observatories are preparing for 3I Atlas to emerge from solar conjunction in early November. The object will reappear in the pre-dawn sky, visible in the constellation Virgo, though still too faint for amateur telescopes at around magnitude 12 to 13. Professional observatories will immediately begin spectroscopic analysis to see if the chemical composition has changed. Did the solar heating drive off the remaining volatiles? Did new materials get exposed from deeper layers? These questions can only be answered once we can see the object again. There's also the question of what those sunspots will do when they rotate back to Earth-facing positions. If they're still active and still growing, we could see major solar storms directed at Earth around November 5th and 6th, coinciding with the biggest supermoon of the year. The moon will be at 99.7% of its closest approach to Earth, just 221,000 miles away, and in full phase, meaning it's positioned directly behind Earth relative to the Sun. This alignment amplifies geomagnetic effects, and if those supercharged sunspots launch Earth-directed coronal mass ejections, we could see significant auroral displays and potential impacts on satellite communications and power grids. The connection between 3I Atlas and increased solar activity isn't just speculation. We saw similar patterns with Oumuamua in 2017. Its perihelion on September 9th was bracketed by two of the strongest solar flares of that entire solar cycle, X-class flares that represented the peak activity of solar cycle 24. The timing was remarkable then, and it's remarkable now. Interstellar objects passing through perihelion seem to coincide with heightened solar activity, suggesting an electromagnetic interaction we don't fully understand yet. What makes 3I Atlas particularly significant is that we're watching this interaction in real time with better instruments than we had for Oumuamua. The James Webb Space Telescope, Hubble, and multiple ground-based observatories are all coordinated to capture data the moment the object becomes visible again. We'll have spectroscopic data, thermal imaging, and high-resolution photographs that will either confirm 3I Atlas is just an unusually active comet from another star system, or reveal something that challenges our understanding of what interstellar objects can be. The solar flares weren't aimed at 3I Atlas with any kind of intent. That's not how the sun works. But the electromagnetic interaction between this interstellar visitor and our star created conditions that triggered some of the most powerful solar eruptions of this cycle. And that interaction is teaching us something fundamental about how objects from other star systems can influence the electromagnetic environment of our solar system in ways we never anticipated. So what happens next? November 4th brings the first major opportunity when the European Space Agency's JUICE probe makes its first post-perihelion observation, passing 40 million miles from 3I Atlas. This will be our first chance to see how the object changed after exposure to those massive solar storms. If 3I Atlas executed any kind of maneuver during perihelion, the effects will be obvious in JUICE's data. Velocity changes of just a few yards per second will be measurable. Then on December 19th, 3I Atlas passes 168 million miles from Earth, its closest approach to our planet. Every major ground-based observatory will be pointed at this object. The James Webb Space Telescope will detect thermal signatures and molecular composition in extraordinary resolution. If there are any lingering mysteries about what this thing is made of, this is when we'll get answers. The final act comes March 16, 2026, when 3I Atlas passes 33 million miles from Jupiter, with NASA's Juno probe providing front row observations. If the object released smaller components during perihelion, fragments, debris, or anything else, some may be on trajectories that bring them near Jupiter at this time. The blackout ends in early November when 3I Atlas emerges from behind the Sun. Telescopes around the world will reacquire the object and will finally see what 33 billion watts of solar radiation did to a visitor from another star. Whether it's exotic chemistry, unusual physics, or just a really weird comet, 3I Atlas has already expanded our understanding of what's possible in the universe. If you found this fascinating, Smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up when those November observations come in.
Drop a comment below with your thoughts on what 3 I Atlas really is and share this with anyone who loves space mysteries as much as you do. The universe is full of surprises and this is just one of them.